Um, so hi everyone, my, my name is Daniel Almeida. I'm with Collabora, as Miguel said. And I'm here to talk a little bit about moving forward with Rust and Beautiful Linux. I wish I had all the answers. I have more questions than, than answers, to be honest. But I, I want this thing, I have like, I'm gonna be like speaking for 10 minutes. And then I want to use the rest of the time for basically uh, discussion. So uh, very quickly, I want to go through what I what I have done so far because I submitted a, a patch set earlier this year to the mailing list with um, some initial, very initial, very early stage support um, for Rust and Vita for Linux. And um, what exactly is there? Well, we have some abstractions for, for some of the Vita for Linux 2 data types. We have a very basic uh, video buff two abstractions from which you can spawn a queue and you can um, allocate buffers and user space can, can basically um, allocate memory and, 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 and talk to the device. You have abstractions for some of the video for Linux IOCLs, which is where most of the work happens in video for Linux. Things like um, enumerating the format, setting formats, um, telling the device to start decoding and so on and so forth. We have the, the code to get the device to probe, which in and of itself um, is not trivial. And we also have a simple module. And the thing that the simple module does on top of all these other things, it basically probes. And whenever a user space can talk to, 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 to this um, driver, and whenever it's processing some IOCTL, it just prints to the terminal, hey, I'm processing um, this IOCTL in beautiful Linux. And it just prints a message, just, just a, a uh, print line statement there, but it probes successfully. And also, why do I think we should experiment with uh, Rust and Video for Linux? I think there are two main reasons, right? The first reason I'd say is that, well, the media subsystem is not like the scheduler. It's not memory management. If the, if the media subsystem, if there's a problem there, it's not critical to the OS. It doesn't bring the whole thing down. And the other problem I think is because video codecs are pretty complicated, Specs for video codecs, they're huge. They're full of details and, and perks and everything. And the attack surface for, for, for codecs are huge. And using Rust, we, I think that we can basically um, make some of the vulnerabilities not possible at compile time uh, when, we're, when we're doing drivers for, for video codecs. And in and, and video for Linux in particular, I know of some areas that are low risk, uh, low risk and they are low hanging fruits that we can um, basically experiment with. So, and I discussed all this with the uh, media, uh, with the media maintainers at, back at the media summit in Prague. Um, and they gave me some feedback and um, some roadblocks as well. So I think the very first thing with the uh, media subsystem uh, recently is that the subsystem is overwhelmed. There's a whole bunch of patches going on. There's not enough um, bandwidth for people to, to, to review. There's not enough uh, reviewers. Um, and, 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 and people are like, they're attack bees enough. So they're like, okay, Daniel, to start off with, we can do this, but not right now, not today, because we're sort of swamped. And one of the things that at Collabora we've been doing to sort of help out with this is that we're making some engineers available to um, work on reviewing patches in, in, the, in the media subsystem. Um, this is one thing that we've been doing in order to increase the bandwidth of people uh, basically reviewing patches. And it's one way that Collabora can contribute to sort of uh, help with this problem, right? Which is uh, a whole lot of uh, work for not enough people in the subsystem. So as I said, not enough reviewers and maintainers. Um, and some people, um, they, they actually told me there's another problem. So particularly with things like the media controller API, uh, which is now a central piece of video for Linux because uh, we have devices like cameras, which they, they, they are very complicated. And we, we use this graph API to sort of expose them to user space. And, and I, I had some feedback from the media maintainers that, well, in this Graph API, uh, we already have some life, life, uh, lifetime issues. We already have some under, underlying issues in the C code. That's what I'm trying to say, that nobody has fixed yet. And then you're trying to add new things on top and you're not really sure how this is gonna work. So we, we should think about this before we can do Rust, Rust code on top of the C code, basically. They also have a huge fear of breaking their C code, which I had to explain to them that this is basically not possible. Just from the way we work, we never touch C code directly in a way that can break it. And they also said that um, then we need more people working on this because if tomorrow you disappear, there has to be another person basically 
um, uh, working with you. And Collabra can also help with this because Collabra can have, uh, in the future, if this works out, Collabra can maybe have more people working on this. But the, the situation now is the following. Everybody is waiting on everybody else and nobody really is moving. And I feel that this effort is blocked. And I dislike this. I want to write codec drivers in Rust. I think this is the future. So I am proposing, which is what I want to discuss here. I want to propose this thing. I want to write a virtual stateless codec driver in Rust. Why do I want to do this? Because I think that if we write a virtual driver in Rust, then it's not much more effort to write a real codec driver for real hardware. Plus, if we write a, a, a virtual driver in Rust, then we move away from the current state of affairs, which is we're discussing a bunch of things, nobody has source code in hand, and nobody can really, um, you know, nobody can really discuss what, what they like and what they dislike. We're only on the realm of ideas. And it turns out that we already have a similar driver in C, which I wrote, which is called Visal. So the Visal driver, again, I, I hopefully you guys understand what a stateless collect driver is. It's it's a driver in video for Linux where you send the compressed data and you also have to parse a part of the compressed data that we call the metadata. And you have to send this metadata to the driver separately so, so that the driver can decode. It's basically um, a driver that takes both the compressed data and some instructions on how to decode that from user space, basically. And we already have a similar driver in C, which is the Visal driver. And what Visal does, um, what Visal does is basically Visal, Gstreamer or FFmpeg or all, um, other user space apps, they can talk to Visal and then start submitting data and metadata to Visal. And they don't think that they're decoding data actually, but Visal isn't decoding anything. Visal is using um, debugging tools like Ftrace to dump things um, to Ftrace, to dump things to debug FS, to dump things through the default to task pattern generator. It's just a debugging tool, basically. But user space, of course, doesn't know this. It's a driver that, as far as user space is concerned, works like any other real driver, any other real code deck driver. So I want to do a subset of this in Rust. I want to take all the debug FS, all the Ftrace stuff, all the task pattern generator stuff away from this because we don't need that for, for a Rust driver. And I want to have a simple driver that probes and in Rust that user space can basically talk to and user space can actually send data to this driver in Rust and receive data back as if this data was decoded. But there's no real hardware. It's only a virtual driver like Visal. And why do I think this is important? Well, because in order for us to have this, um, this virtual driver, which I'm speaking of in Rust, in Nvidia for Linux, a whole lot of things have to happen first. So we have to have the abstractions for uh, important um, referral to components that we are also going to reuse for real drivers. So we have to have abstractions for video buff tube. We have to have abstractions for M2M. Um, we have to have some abstractions for the media controller. My point being, we have to have some abstractions for, for this driver, which real drivers are then going to use. So this moves the, the ball, so to speak, forward. This, 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 is, uh, this, this moves the state of affairs further, basically. So it's not much more effort to write a driver for real hardware. It's going to show the video for Linux community um, how a, a, a Rust driver will look like in their subsystem. It's not a critical component. If this thing doesn't work, we can just, you know, um, see is working on it. And maintainers will have actual source code to assess, to judge, to see whether that fits within their subsystem, basically. That's, that's my point. And eventually, if, if, if this driver um, starts to be accepted and people think that this is a good idea, we can deprecate Visal and we can have this Rust driver instead. So this is, this is the plan that I have to move this, the, 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 the state of affairs in, 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 in video for Linux. And I, want, I wanted to discuss this. I wanted uh, later, uh, later uh, in a few minutes, I want to hear from, from, from the audience what you guys think if this is a, is a good idea. And also I have a few open questions. Um, so the first question has been asked here a few times already. Um, what happens if the C API is changed and it breaks Rust code, which I think was a question Jonathan um, asked previously. And can we detect this automatically? I know that this is not possible currently, but I, I think when I was talking to the maintainers, to, to hands tomorrow, to other people, 
that was one of the major issues. Like they do not want to get blocked by the Rust code. Um, so they're, they're, they're like, what if something breaks and we, we can't produce a fix in time? This is gonna break uh, or delay everything. Um, so one of the things that I propose is to have a separate K config, which basically this driver is going to be behind, such as like media experimental or something or expert, so that you, you do not uh, enable this. And if you do enable this, you know that, well, it, it can break your code basically. And the other thing I want to do is to have a Collabora meeting branch where the community uh, is going to have the latest and greatest um, 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 code and abstractions and everything in order to develop um, uh, an in Rust for Duty for Linux. And it's also um, another thing that I want the audience's opinion on whether this is a it's a good idea, whether this adds value, basically. And the other question I have is if there's anything that you think we can do in order to drive this uh, forward. This basically concludes my 10 minutes. So, uh... Hi. Hi. Can you stand up for us? Oh, so the question I kind of have about doing a driver that's already in the tree is what do you do when they say, well, we already have that driver in the tree. Why are we going to take this one? I, I, I worry about doing things that are already existing in the tree in Rust because it's an easy out for people to say it already exists. We don't need it in the tree. That's, that's my only concern with that strategy that you this is a strategy that's been looking uh, that, that other um, uh, Rust uh, programmers in the kernel are also looking for. And the, 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 what Miguel said is that we... I, I understand that the strategy can work. I, I, I would be open to that strategy. In, in my subsystem, I'm questioning whether the subsystem maintainers are open to the strategy in the V4L2 subsystem. And that's not something I would be yeah. sure of. So, so they have to say yes, as we know. But I'm pretty sure from what I have talked about. <laughs> yes, I met Mauro. I was I was with him in Prague. So I'm somewhat confident from what I, I've met them and talked to them that this can work. I, if I if I talk more to people, I I'm, I'm confident that I, that I can make this work. <laughs> Other questions? Yeah, a comment. Uh, it sounds like you and I are sort of in in the same boat, sort of, right? Uh, and it, it also now I'm, I'm not familiar with the uh, with the uh, video for Linux, but it sounds like your visual is a little bit similar to Notlock. Uh, and at least um, when when I started the uh, um, block layer stuff uh, last year, the uh, the response was very much like uh, we are not ready for this. And the 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 response I get now is less. Of a, let's know, right? So, so it's more of a maybe. Maybe we can have a null block. Maybe we can have it even existing alongside uh, the the uh, the C version. Because if we're ever going to go this way, we're going to have something to look at, like a first step. Um, so, I I think these are the hoops that we're going to have to jump through because we have a community that we need to um, cater to as well, right? Yeah. So, I think it's a good idea. I was expecting a more negative feedback from people, but they're actually open for this. It's, it does have some restrictions. Yes, Julia. So I've never written any Rust abstractions, so I don't know what they look like, but based on the question you asked, I wonder if there's some way that, like, if we're writing these abstractions, could we write some extra information that would, some, would somehow help people address this problem of how to keep them up to date and how to detect when they're out of date and so on? So, well, one comment referring to the first question also related to what Julia just asked. So what we cannot detect automatically, so we can detect for sure automatically if it does not, if it does not compile, right? Which is what I was uh, answering to John. So the, the problem I was referring to, that we can, so if, if it actually breaks, like it doesn't compile, we can detect that. I, I mean, the subsystem could have just, a part, as part of the test, they just need to compile a code. They don't even need to run it, right? Now, there is the other layer, which is the, logic things in the implementation that could change that that we cannot detect automatically you would need more like tests or something that uh, uh, try to catch uh, uh, any kind of uh, change there and what we have been uh, suggesting is uh, 
two things. One is, of course, the maintainers need to be involved. They need to know when, basically, what they have, what abstractions they have on the Rust side, so that they basically catch the 99% of the cases, and hopefully nothing slips. The other thing that we would like to do as well, that maybe some maintainers like, is adding a marker, especially for huge APIs, adding a marker where, in the C side, a comment saying, well, there is an equivalent in Rust. It doesn't need to be anything else than a small one word, even a keyword, that then when you go to edit that thing, please know that there is something else somewhere else. That would help maybe not maintainers, but it would help everybody else that is, needs to touch that code, right? Uh, because maintainers should, they, in general, they should know what they have accepted in the Rust side, right? We, we have that problem with C drivers anyway. Like if you change yeah. the behavior of an internal kernel API and you don't audit every single C driver in a tree, something's going to, and no one tests them all either. So it's like, yeah, we have that problem. Yeah, yeah, we, we sometimes we say that, but the, the, it's true that, it's also true, I understand the concern that in the Rust case, many people maybe is contributing, maybe not the maintainer, but other people that send patches to the system to the C side, maybe they just send them, they are not aware of what is happening because it's experimental, uh, they don't care about the Rust side. So I think it's a problem that will solve itself with time. It's just a, it's a concern that I understand that maintainers have. But I think so far what we have seen is that uh, it's not uh, such a big deal. The biggest deal is getting maintainers to, to get involved, I think, and, and to learn a bit of Rust so that they are confident on unbreaking, basically. Uh, not being, uh, 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 the, the worry is that, oh, I have to fix this. I have some color in the Rust side, and I don't know Rust to change it. So now, if I don't want to break the kernel rule of you have to, whenever you change in the kernel something, you have to change all the colors to match, right? So uh, some maintainers worry about not being able to do that quickly, especially for, you know, you get a security thing that you have to fix. Uh, you don't want to wait for the last side. And what Daniel is proposing, and what we discussed, is that the, if, if the video for Linux maintainers are really, uh, uh, really concerned about that and they think it will block them, well, Daniel could offer, for example, well, I could be the maintainer. Well, one thing is that you can offer is, I will be the maintainer of that side. So you just ping me, and I will help you right away. So you have to commit, of course, or Daniel would need to commit to be ready to be uh, on the spot to, to fix things, right? Another way is uh, to, well, the comment uh, in, the, in, in the thing that would point uh, um, uh, people to the, to the Rust side, and hopefully they could then come to us, maybe, if, if Daniel is not around, they could, in the beginning, they could, come to us to, to ask uh, uh, the Rust uh, subsystem, they could come to us and, and say, hey, we need particular uh, help here because maybe no one uh, is answering. But in general, we need somebody uh, on who to fall back, right? Um, another thing that Daniel could do is mark the experimental thing. It could be with a symbol, it could be with expert, it could be something else. Uh, it could be marked just as, you know, not meant for users. It's just a reference driver, right? It's, it's something that is, to, to evaluate whether it's viable or not to have Rust in that subsystem. Even if, it, maybe not technically, but rather uh, uh, in the sense of, oh, we have enough people, we do have enough resources to, to keep with Rust. So if we can have, even if it is a duplicate driver, which is another rule that we should not break, but I proposed uh, um, in, the, in, the, in the maintainer summit uh, topics, I proposed, I, I wrote the proposal, and I was talking about it on Monday. We propose um, enabling maintainers that are willing to do so uh, to break that rule of no duplicate drivers, only for the case where you want to have a Rust reference driver that you want to use for, for basically uh, education purposes, for testing purposes, for starting the ball rolling, to get abstractions upstream, to avoid breaking the not dead code rule, and so on and so forth, and so forth right? So there are several options. Different maintainers have, when we talk about uh, this with them, different maintainers reply differently. Uh, some prefer that there is somebody, and they are happy if there is somebody in the maintainer's file, even if it is not their subsystem in another entry, that's fine. They say, okay, that's good enough. Uh, some may say, no, 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 we, we, we should do this uh, more slowly, uh, but they are open. Uh, yeah, it, it's different maintainers, different uh, uh, situations. And in the case of Daniel, I, I suggested that maybe he could do one of these, and maybe the video for Linux folks uh, are open to that. Uh, but yes, I think in these situations, uh, the person behind the, the thing, the best thing they can do is commit, like publicly commit, okay, I will maintain this for at least, say, one year. I will be there. Uh, I will try to help you guys uh, as much as I can. And, uh, and then in one year, we will see where we are. And then the maintainers can decide, well, this worked or not, right? So we, we need to try. It's like the Rust experiment all in the whole kernel. This is like the local experiments in the subsystem, right? Exactly that.
and I can miss, right? With, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 So of course there's a risk, and we also talked with uh, just yesterday I was talking with another maintainer of not related to video for Linux. They were saying, yeah, but even if somebody commits, well, they can go away, right? That of course that's a risk. It can happen, but it's an experiment. If you declare if this is an experiment, like for the Rust kernel uh, experiment in general, well, if in one year the person has gone away or the thing doesn't work, well, we just take it out. There is no risk as long as we don't have users uh, uh, using the thing, and that's also the the, the proposal. It, it, it came from these situations, uh, Andreas, Daniel, and other things that we have been talking about. Uh, so I think the way to unblock is, as, as long as the maintainers are, are okay with at least trying, of course, uh, is, is to offer this. Uh, yeah. Any other feedback for Daniel? I think we have a still time, probably. Anybody have any other questions? Feedback? Okay, thanks a lot, Daniel.